Good afternoon children. Today we are going to learn the chapter from the diary of Aunt Frank. Before we begin the lesson, let's learn about the author, Aunt Frank. Anne Frank was a Jewish girl who became famous for the diary she wrote during the Second World War. She was born in the German city of Frankfurt in 1929. She had a sister, Margot, who was three years older. Things were going badly in Germany. Unemployment was high and many people were poor. At the same time, Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party were gaining supporters by promising to solve the country's problems. The Nazis hated the Jews and blamed them for the problems. When the Nazis came to power in 1933, hostility to the Jews increased. Anne's parents, Otto and Edith, decided to flee to the Netherlands. They settled in Amsterdam, here, on Merwedeplein. Anne soon felt at home. She went to school, learned Dutch and made new friends. Six years later, war broke out across Europe. In 1939, Nazi Germany invaded Poland, and in 1940, the German army occupied the Netherlands. The Nazi occupiers made life increasingly difficult for Jews. Jews have to wear a Jewish star. Jews have to hand in their bicycles. Jews are not allowed in the tram. Jews are not allowed to ride in cars. Jews must attend Jewish schools and so on and so forth. In the summer of 1942, after Anne's sister, Margot, was ordered to report for a so-called labor camp, the Frank family went into hiding behind Otto's business on the Prinzengracht. They were joined there later by the Van Pels family and Fritz Pfeffer. The eight people in hiding were held by loyal staff and friends of Otto's, Miep and Jan Hees, Johan Voskal and his daughter Bep, Victor Kugler and Johannes Kleiman. Meanwhile, the Nazis had tightened their grip, organizing raids and arresting and deporting Jews to so-called labor camps. In reality, these were concentration and death camps. In her diary, Anne wrote about living in the hiding place, the war, and her thoughts and feelings. I feel bad for lying in a warm bed, while my dearest friends are out there somewhere, thrown or fallen to the ground. And that only because they are Jews. An appeal from the Dutch government in London inspired Anne to rework her diary entries into a book. Before she had finished, however, their hiding place was discovered and all eight were captured on the 4th of August 1944. They were deported to the concentration and death camp Auschwitz-Birkenau. Miep Gies and Bep Voskal, two of the helpers, found the diaries Anne had left behind. Meep kept them in case Anne ever came back. But she didn't come back. In February 1945, Anne and Margot died of typhus in appalling conditions in the concentration camp Bergen-Belsen. Anne was 15. Of the eight people, only Anne's father, Otto, survived the war. When he read Anne's diaries after the war, they made a deep impression. He discovered how much writing had meant to her. No one who doesn't write can know how fine it is. And if I don't have the talent to write for newspapers or books, well then, I can always go on writing for myself. Otto read how Anne had hoped to publish a book, so he carried out her wish. Anne's story about life in hiding and the war is read all over the world. Her diary has been translated into more than 70 languages. The Hiding Place is now a museum and welcomes more than a million visitors a year. In this chapter, Anne Frank tells about the early years of her life. She also describes why she decided to keep a diary. This chapter contains the first few pages of her diary. As you have learned from the video, Anne Frank was a little Jewish girl. She used to write a diary. In her diary, she gives a sensational account of her life. This chapter contains the first few pages of her diary. Here, she tells why she decided to keep a diary. 
She had no one with whom she could share the feelings of her heart. So she decided to keep a diary in which she could pour out her innermost feelings. First of all, she gives a brief account of her parents and her elder sister. Then she gives a funny picture of her days at school. She tells how she used to be very talkative. Her teacher tried to punish her by giving her extra homework. He gave her an essay to write and wrote the essay in the form of a humorous verse. The teacher was very pleased to read it. He allowed Anne to talk in his class. So this chapter is all about some funny moments that happened in Anne's school days. So let's begin the chapter. Writing in a diary is a really strange experience for someone like me. Not only really because I have never written anything before, but also because it seems to me that later on neither I nor anyone else will be interested in the musings of a 13-year-old schoolgirl. Oh well, it doesn't matter. I feel like writing and I have an even greater need to get all kinds of things off my chest. So in the first paragraph, Anne says that writing a diary was a new experience for her. Not only really because she has never written anything before, also because she is sure that nobody is going to be interested in the musings, in the thoughts or meditation of a 13-year-old schoolgirl. And she is saying to herself that it doesn't matter because she is writing a diary as she feels like writing a diary. And there is a great need to relax herself by writing the diary so that she can share the feelings of her heart with the diary and thus she can relax and keep off things from her chest. Paper has more patience than people. Children underline that sentence very important it is. Paper has more patience than people. I thought of this saying on one of those days when I was feeling a little depressed and was sitting at home with my chin in my hands, bored and listless, wondering whether to stay in or go out. I finally stayed where I was, brooding. Yes, paper does have more patience. And since I am not planning to let anyone else read this stiff-backed notebook, grandly referred to as a diary, unless I should ever find a real friend, it probably won't make a bit of difference. Now we can see and quoting a saying. Paper has more patience than people. And says this because people, they will not be having any time to listen to our feelings and our thoughts. But paper will be always there and it is known for its patience. One day she was feeling so depressed and she was sitting all alone at home and she was having her chin in her hands and bored and out of energy and interest. And she was wondering whether to stay in or go out. Finally, she decided to sit there and think. And she was planning to write all her feelings and emotions in this book. And she calls it a stiff bag notebook. What do you mean by a stiff bag notebook? A totally true correct book. She was feeling so free to express anything on this diary because she will never give this diary to read unless she finds a real friend. And it is not going to make any difference, any problem for her if she is pouring out her mind in her diary. Now, I am back to the point that prompted me to keep a diary in the first place. I don't have a friend. Now, in this third paragraph, Anne is making it very clear that what was the motivational force behind her decision of writing a diary? Because she don't have a friend. So she is keeping the diary in the place of a friend. That much importance this diary was having in the life of Anne. Let me put it more clearly. Since no one will believe that a 13-year-old girl is completely alone in the world. And I am not. 
I have loving parents and a 16 year old sister. And there are about 30 people I can call friends. I have a family, loving aunts and a good home. No on the surface, I seem to have everything except my one true friend. All I think about when I am with friends is having a good time. I can't bring myself to talk about anything but ordinary everyday things. We don't seem to be able to get any closer and that's the problem. Maybe it's my fault that we don't confide in each other. In any case, that's just how things are. And unfortunately, they are not liable to change. This is why I have started the diary. Now, Anne is making it very clearly in this paragraph that please don't think that I am all alone in this world and dot. No, I am not. I have a very loving family. I have a father, mother, a 16-year-old elder sister. And I have a group of friends of 30, which I call my friends. But still, I miss a true friend in my life. I talk with my friends about the ordinary everyday things, but she is not able to confide, to reveal her secret emotions and feelings to that one true friend. So she is lacking a true friend in her life. And she says that maybe it is her fault that she is not feeling that much sure to reveal her things to her friends. And she is not feeling that comfortable with the other friends. So she keep on waiting for a true friend and at one point she came to the conclusion that she is not going to get any true friend or that kind. So she began to write a diary by considering it as her true friend. To enhance the image of this long awaited friend in my imagination, I don't want to jot down the facts in this diary the way most people would do. But I want the diary to be my friend and I am going to call this friend Kitty. So she says that she is having a very good image of a true friend. So she is not going to just note down the facts in the diary. She is going to call the diary a name. And what's the name children? It's Kitty. And she will be treating the diary as her own friend. And she will be treating the diary as her own friend. Since no one would understand a word of my stories to Kitty, if I were to plunge right in, I would better provide a brief sketch of my life, much as I dislike doing so. So Anne was in an attempt to introduce herself to her friend Kitty and she is now going to give a short bio sketch of her life, a profile we may call it like that. My father, the most adorable father I have ever seen, didn't marry my mother until he was 36 and she was 25. My sister Margaret was born in Frankfurt in Germany in 1926. I was born on 12 June 1929. I lived in Frankfurt until I was four. My father immigrated to Holland in 1933. My mother, Edith Hollander Frank, went with him to Holland in September while Margaret and I were sent to Aachen to stay with our grandmother. Margaret went to Holland in December and I followed in February when I was plunked down on the table as a birthday present for Margaret. So in a very funny manner she has done her bio sketch and she says that her father is the most adorable father showing her affection to her father and she says further that her father got married to her mother at the age of 36 and when her mother was 25 and uh, her sister was born in Frankfurt in Germany in 1926 and Anne was born in the year 1929, June 12. And they lived in Frankfurt until Anne was four and then her father emigrated to Holland and her mother, the mother's name is now mentioned, Edith Hollander Frank. She also accompanied her husband to Holland in September. So Margaret and uh, Frank was uh, staying with their grandmother at Acton. And uh, Margaret went to Holland later that December. And Anne also followed her in February. So Anne is saying that she was given as a birthday present for Margaret. I started right away at the Montessori Nursery School. I stayed there until I was six at which time I started in the first form. 
In the sixth form, my teacher was Mrs. Kupras, the headmistress. At the end of the year, we were both in tears as we said heartbreaking farewell. So she says that she was in the Montessori nursery school. Okay, here also in our city we have this Montessori school. So, okay, children. Actually, it is named after the way of teaching of that school. Okay, and uh, she says that when she was six years old, she was in the first form. See, children, the first form is class one, the first standard, and all we have here. And the sixth form is class six. Okay. And her teacher of that class six was Mrs. Kupras. And she was the headmistress also. And at the end of the year, she said it was very hard to bid her a farewell. Both were crying a lot. In the summer of 1941, grandma fell ill and has to, had to have an operation. So my birthday passed with little celebration. Grandma died in January 1942. No one knows how often I think of her and still love her. This birthday celebration in 1942 was intended to make up for the other and grandma's candle was lit along with the rest. So she says that in the year 1941 during the summer days her grandma was falling ill and she had an operation. So her birthday was not having any celebration. Nobody had celebrated her birthday. In 1942, in the month of January, grandma died. So, in the birthday celebration of 1942, was expected to compensate the birthday celebration of 1941 as well. So, Anne shares with her diary that grandma was so close to her and she still loved her and think of her so often. And there was a candle for grandma lit along with her birthday cake. The four of us are still doing well and that brings me to the present date of 20 June 1942 and the solemn dedication of my diary. So children, on which day Anne started writing the diary? It is 20 June 1942 and she is dedicating that year for her diary for Kitty. And she is saying that four of them, her father, mother and her sister were doing well by that time. So children, when you are asked the question of writing a diary entry based on this type of Randall, always take note of this date as it is very historical and important. So she is officially beginning the diary writing. The diary entry is made on the date 20 June 1942 Saturday. So let's find out what happened in that day in Anne's life. Dearest Kitty, our entire class is quaking in its boots. The reason, of course, is the forthcoming meeting in which the teachers decide who will move up to the next form and who will be kept back. Half the class is making bets. GN and I laugh ourselves silly at the two boys behind us, CN and Jackus, who have stocked their end holiday savings on their bet. From morning to night, it's you are going to pass. No, I am not as you are. No, I am not. Even G's pleading glances and my angry outburst can't calm them down. If you ask me, there are so many dummies that about a quarter of the class should be kept back. But teachers are the most unpredictable creatures on earth. Okay, children, underline the sentence. Teachers are the most unpredictable creatures on earth. Okay, so she says that it was a day of this open house. And it will be easy for you to get the idea how a child will be feeling on the day of open house. So on that day, it will be decided that who is going to pass to the next class. So the friends know they were having the bet each other that some uh, they are going to pass. No, they are going to fail likewise, Sandra. And uh, Han was not at all feeling good about this bet, Sandra. And she mentions a boy that she, he had uh, put his entire pocket money on this bet, Sandra. And she says that most of the children of the class were dummies. Means no emotion, nothing. And she also remarks towards the end that teachers are the most unpredictable creatures on earth. Why you think so? I would like to know your opinion as well. Do you think teachers are the most unpredictable creatures on earth? Maybe I am not sure what you think of it. Okay. So children, it's a short intro about the open house that Anne was having and uh, she was going to promote her to her next form. Okay. I am not so worried about my girlfriends and myself. We'll make it. 
The only subject I am not sure about is Max. Anyway, all we can do is wait. Until then, we keep telling each other not to lose heart. See, Anne was good at studies, okay? So, she is not that much nervous about passing and failing and all. But she also remarks that uh, Max was the only subject she was not sure of passing. And uh, she is uh, making herself calm down by saying that all that we can do is to wait to know the result, okay? I get along pretty well with all my teachers. There were nine of them, seven men and two women. Mr. Kiesing, the old 4G who teaches Max, was annoyed with me for ages because I talked so much. After several warnings, he assigned me extra homework. An essay on the subject, a chatterbox. A chatterbox, what can you write about that? I'd worry about that later, I decided. I jotted down the title in my notebook, tucked it in my bag and tried to keep quiet. Now, Anne is mentioning about her relation, her bonding with her teachers and all. And she says that uh, all are okay with her. She is not that uh, problematic student and all. But uh, one problem is there. She is very talkative and her max teacher, Mr. Kissing. And he is remarked as 40 means an old-fashioned man, okay. A person who is very old-fashioned. He gets very irritated and annoyed when she talks so much. And he has uh, given her a lot of warnings. And he even assigned her a homework, an essay on the subject, a chatterbox. So Anne had uh, noted down the homework and she thought of worrying about it later. That evening, after I had finished the rest of my homework, the note about the essay caught my eye. I began thinking about the subject while chewing the tip of my fountain pen. Anyone could ramble on and leave big spaces between the words. But the trick was to come up with convincing arguments to prove the necessity of talking. I thought and thought and suddenly I had an idea. I wrote the three pages Mr. Kissing had assigned me and was satisfied. I argued that talking is a student's trade and that I would do my best to keep it under control. But... That I would never be able to cure myself of the habit since my mother talked as much as I did, not if not more, and that there is not much you can do about inherited traits. So what Anne is doing here is that that evening after finishing the rest of her homeworks, uh, she is now uh, caught sight of the note which says that she has to write an essay which is given as homework by Mr. Kissing. Now Anne began to think about the subject and she was chewing her tip of fountain pen. Yeah, almost all of you have this habit of chewing the tip of pen when you think something and all. It's quite natural, okay? And uh, she was determined that she is not going to write something aimlessly, okay? She is not going to write something which is uh, aimless and meaningless and all. And uh, she wanted to convince Mr. Kissing the necessity of talking, okay? And uh, she thought and thought and she had a good idea now. Now, let's find out what Anne had really wrote. She wrote three pages and the content was that talking is a student's trait and Anne will do the best to keep it under control. But she also remarked that she will never be able to cure it because it was a habit which she inherited from her mother. Her mother is also very talkative. Huh? So she said that she cannot do anything as related to this inherited traits. Okay, children, now let's find out how Mr. K. Singh responded to Anne's answer. And let's say on Chatterbox. Mr. K. Singh had a good laugh at my arguments. But when I proceeded to talk my way through the next lesson, he assigned me a second essay. This time it was supposed to be on an incorrigible chatterbox. I handed it in and Mr. Kissing had nothing to complain about for two whole lessons. However, during the third lesson, he had finally had enough. And Frank, as punishment for talking in class, write an essay entitled Quack, 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 said Mistress Chatterbox. Now, he just laughed at her arguments. and. He became so angry when she again started to talk and she was assigned with second essay. 
and what was the topic of the second essay children an incorrigible what do you mean by incorrigible something that cannot be corrected okay an incorrigible chapter box so an also wrote an essay on that topic after that two lessons went cool but uh, during the third lesson what happened and was becoming so talkative and again mr kissing had to punish her and this time she got the punishment to write an essay entitled quack 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 said mistress tatterbox see children now i also having the idea that uh, when you talk in the class you should be given such interesting uh, punishments no now what happened no this time it was a very tough essay for and the class roared i had to laugh too though i i had nearly exhausted my ingenuity on the topic of chatter boxes it was time to come up with something else something original my friend sain who is good at poetry offered to help me write the essay from beginning to end in verse and i jumped for joy mr casing was trying to play a joke on me with this ridiculous subject but i had make i would make sure that joke was on him I finished my poem and it was beautiful. It was about a mother duck and a father swan with three baby ducklings who were bitten to death by the father because they quacked too much. Luckily Mr. Kissing took the joke the right way. Now what happened? The entire class roared with laughter. Yes, that's what happens when you are also assigned with punishments and all, isn't it? And uh, even Anne laughed at this punishment. Now she had a thought that all her creativity skills had been tried up and she wanted to try something new on this punishment essay topic and her friend san had promised to write poetry instead of essay what they did was that they converted it into a poetry and from beginning to end in verse in poetic language okay in this poetic form and uh, actually mr casing was trying to play a joke on and and actually and wanted to make mr kissing a joke that was just play some of both of them and when she read the poem it was beautiful actually her poem was about a mother duck and a father swan and they had three baby ducklings actually these three baby ducklings no they quacked too much that their father bitten them to death okay it's a very satirical poem okay but for her luck mr kissing took the joke in a right way he read the poem to the class adding his own comments and to several other classes as well since then i have been allowed to talk and haven't been assigned any extra homework on the contrary mr kissing's always making jokes these days yours and okay so what happened after reading the poem mr kissing read the poem to the entire class and he added his own comments He even read that poem to other classes, and after that incident, Anne was given the complete freedom to talk in the class. It sounds very amusing, isn't it? And uh, on the opposite of it, what happened? Mr. Kissing he started to say jokes in the class. Okay, it was a very interesting chapter as far as we are concerned. Okay, and uh, she is uh, concluding it by saying, "Yours, Anne." Okay, students. So we just learned an extract from the diary of a young girl. So children, read the chapter well. And you have any doubts? We will clear it off in the live session. See you all. Have a nice day. Thank you.